Hey guys, Dagahal. So today is another video in my series for sentence mining. And I want to talk a little bit about keeping a diary in your target language. So, first of all, what are the pros? Why should we do it? So, first of all, writing out, and this is for any output, speaking, writing, texting, you're learning words that are relevant for you. So if I'm writing about what I did that week, I'm naturally going to cover words that I want to use in a real life situation and that I can use speaking day to day. So that's the first reason. Second thing is that writing out by hand is, it's, it's a slower process, so it's quite time consuming, which is why I'd only recommend doing it maybe once or twice a week. But because you're taking your time and going through it a lot slower, you have much, much more time than compared to when you're speaking. And because you're getting corrected after and it's coming back, if you follow what I say in this video, then it's a great way to improve your grammar. You can take your time, think about what you want to write, diff use different words, a great way to activate vocabulary, maybe look up words if you're not sure of them, and get corrections and get feedback, and then it's kind of a fun way to improve your grammar. So the other thing as well, if you're learning a different script, like uh, for my case with Chinese, then you're not going to be able to practice writing uh, the same as if you're just texting. If you actually want to be able to write, say, in something that uses the Roman alphabet, like French, Spanish, German, generally you can probably text and write. It's not too far of a leap, but with something like Chinese, you need to practice writing out by hand in full otherwise you're not going to connect everything together in your brain properly because if you're just texting you use like pinyin sort of input so that's the main thing so it's learning words relevant for you you can improve your grammar improve writing out by hand if you're interested in chinese japanese arabic whatever uses a different script and it's fun you know i think that's probably one of the most overlooked things at the moment so how often should you do it so I think important when you're trying to create a routine it's sustainability so if you say oh i'm going to write out a journal every single day and post it for corrections and then rewrite it out again it's it's not going to last it's it's just, it's just not uh, unless you're that sort of person but so i'd recommend what i've been doing is twice a week so and also the other thing if you do it too much you're probably going to run out of things to say i mean i, I don't do that much day day so if, if I write a journal out every morning I'd probably be writing the same thing out over and over and over and it just take all the fun out of it so what I do is write out twice a week once on Monday morning once on Friday morning Monday I write about what I did that weekend and Friday morning I write about what I did during the week and that, that's quite a nice balance between being regular uh, sustainable and keeping it fun and not being too much that's why and how often you should do it so I'll go over quickly about my routine so i have mentioned a bit about corrections so i'll get to that in a second but basically the first thing i did was and this is one that i haven't got corrected on yet so it's going to be full of mistakes but i write out by full a diary entry in this try and off the top of my head and try and refrain from using a dictionary as much as i can uh, if i really can't think of word and i'm struggling or I just haven't learnt one then I would use it for that but I try as much as possible to not use it and just do it completely from memory um, and this is relatively long for me the other thing as well is that when you write it for the first time you're gonna struggle I struggled a lot so I had to look up a lot of words and it's just the top half here so from here up was my first entry and as I've gone it's gotten longer and longer and longer so tip one try and refrain from using a dictionary as much as possible and tip two make it progressive start short and then as you build confidence and you build momentum you can slowly make the dialogues longer and longer so so that's it so this is uh, from the 5th 5th of february a few days ago monday and that hasn't got corrected yet but i'll show you an example of has so what i do is on page one write it out in full and then I'd upload it to a website for corrections. Uh, there's a few options for this. Langay is my p 
personal favorite but i think they might be having a problem with sign up right now so you can also do this on italki and hello talk the app so what you do is you upload it and ask for corrections and then when and this is the important thing is if you upload it for corrections and don't do anything with it then there's no point you know that's only halfway there so once you've got the corrections copy it out again and notice these two texts are almost the same so that's the original and then copy out with the corrections on the flip side of the page um, and then copy out and fill with all the corrections and then take those corrections and I put them into my mass sentences deck on Anki um, you can also compare the two texts the one with corrections without see where your gaps are yeah, so that's that, that's basically it. So you, you just write it out, post it for corrections, and then make sure when once you've got them, write it out again with the corrections and put the ones that you think are most important on into your flashcards and Anki. And I think I've said about grammar earlier. Uh, I personally find grammar books incredibly boring. So this is quite a fun way for me to improve it. So if I if they change the word order or add an extra word, change the conjugation, maybe it's the wrong, in Cantonese, maybe it's the wrong measure word or something like that. Pay, try and pay special attention to the little details and what they've changed. Yeah, and I, th I think I think it, the first one for me was very difficult. Uh, it took, even just writing half a page, it took about 45 minutes, and then now it's getting easier each time. So this, uh, just over a page, page and a bit, in a uh, fairly small book I think about half an hour so it's getting, getting easier and easier each time and before I go one quick announcement I have started up a website www.fulltimefluency.com this is going to be all about similar things to what I talk about here uh, how to learn a language methods strategies uh, a bit about my personal experience uh, Hong Kong uh, characters stuff like that and yeah, and I've made a free step-by-step -step email guide, day-by-day, -day, walking you through exactly how and what to do when you're taking your first steps learning a language, right? From uh, finding the time, finding the time, what resources to get, when should you start speaking, uh, if it's a Chinese language. I have it split into different languages, European, Chinese, Cantonese and Chinese and Japanese. So uh, should you learn characters, tones, for Chinese and Cantonese, uh, all that good stuff. So, yeah, and it's completely free. So, if you're interested in that, then don't forget I'll leave a link in the description, fulltimefluency.com, in the description, and go check that out. So that's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to give this a thumbs up, like, and give me a comment if you've tried this before, if it didn't work for you, if it did work for you, uh, that sort of thing. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Hasta luego. Bye-bye.